Beyond Critical Race Theory. Yes, and uh, and I, Mr. Ayo Ben Yahoo, runs yeah. these every week. Yeah. Yeah, and he has yeah, been yeah. running a series uh yeah. which is on this on date, this date. Yes. exactly so go ahead yes. and and let's do it brother uh so yes beyond critical race theory what you don't hear in the school system yeah, called what yeah, you right. don't hear at all unless we the hebrews are gathering it together so a little bit of information beyond critical race theory actually on yesterday june 13th 1904 um and it's 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 set of benefiting the fact that we're talking about this family event that's going to be taking place july 30th and i wanted to do this uh due to that and this family event that we're having uh you just talked uh you just heard sister delta and sheer allude to breaking the curses right that's right this event is how we're going to break these curses and this what i'm about to read to y'all is most definitely a curse deuteronomy talks about it and proverbs we're going to go to proverbs 13 24 through 25 to preface this before i go into this article for uh on this day with beyond critical race theory and i got i got my seat for the night because i told you when i can read it from my phone but when i'm turning the pages it make me make me think i'm smart make me feel like I'm smart. <laughs> now you think he's smart <laughs> right. so proverbs 13 and you feel like you're doing so, something with right. your book. You feel important right <laughs> you feel important Proverbs 13, 24, and 25. Everybody's familiar with this verse. He that spares his rod hates his son, but he that loves him chastens him early. The righteous eats to the satisfying of his soul, but the belly of the wicked shall want. All right, let's get into it, family. On this day, now, once again, you can always go to... Uh, the website a history of racial injustice and we are going to get into this article right let me see as soon as i can all right an israelite mother ordered by judge to participate in the brutal beating of her teenage son in front of hundreds of white spectators in kentucky let's get into it and then right there, you see the newspaper says, Negro publicly whipped Louisville, Kentucky, judge orders mother to use. And we're going to talk about something later on to see how important or unimportant these judges are in our system, man. Uh, we talked about it last week, talk about the uh, KKK having judges sitting on the federal Supreme benches making these decisions. Check this out. On June 13th, 1904, a white judge ordered a black uh, Israelite mother to brutally beat her 15-year-old son in front of hundreds of white people in the Lexington, Kentucky Town Square. Judge John J. Riley imposed this sentence upon the boy, Simon Searcy, as punishment for getting into a physical altercation with a white boy. Compelled by the judge's order, Simon's mother took her son straight from the courtroom, through the crowded streets, and to the town square filled with white residents. There, her son was stripped of his clothing and tied to a post, and she administered 20 lashes from a buggy whip. Um, and if y'all don't know what a buggy whip is, it's not the big long ones, it's the shorter ones, so it makes a shorter pop, uh, very deadly and very dangerous. Um, if Simon's mother had refused to whip her son as ordered, she risked facing her own charges of contempt and also risked angering the judge who had power to impose an even harsher punishment upon her son. This brutal punishment of an Israelite child was rooted in the prior era of enslavement. During that time, Israelite children, women, and men were whipped with impunity by enslavers and traffickers, leaving physical and emotional scars. We still wear these emotional scars to this day. Narratives of the experience of enslavement written by Israelite people who escaped bondage often describe how white enslavers would cruelly force enslaved people to participate in the punishment of others. Forced to whip fellow enslaved Israelite people for running away, working too slowly, or other alleged offenses, these men and women were threatened with violence or death if they refused. For generations after emancipation, white urban and rural communities alike witnessed and participated in the public spectacle of violent punishments inflicted upon Israelite people through racial terror, lynching, and daily massacres targeting entire Israelite communities. We're almost, we're almost done. 
a narrative of racial difference, the belief that Israelite people were inferior to white people was constructed to justify this treatment. That myth of white supremacy survived the formal abolition of enslavement and involved to include the belief that Israelite people were and are dangerous criminals. Israelite people, even children like small Simon, were frequently met with harsh and often violent retribution from courts, not just people, but from courts, after being accused of minor social transgressions or for defending themselves against attacks from white people. Even white press accounts of Simon Searcy's punishment recognized the whippings seen roots in enslavement. One headline reporting the e events declared, reminder of old days, Negro boy whipped at post in Kentucky for striking white boy. So there you have it. June 13th, 1904, little Simon Searcy was ordered by the court to be taken by his mother in front of a small town and whipped 20 lashes or more.